Assalamu alaikum and good morning class. Today we are going to learn about a new topic which is the electromagnetic compatibility. But before we begin, does anyone have any questions about this topic? Me, a doctor. Uh, yes. What is the EMC and uh, what uh, we can relate with the lemon term? Can you explain to me first, uh, doctor? Oh, okay, sure. Uh, have you seen the last uh, Fast, I mean Fast and Furious 7, the movie? Yes. In that movie, you can see there is a scene where the, they use an EMP bomb to affect the uh, technology of their opponents. And that's what's happened uh, when you use an EMP. It's uh, an electrical device that is not compatible with each other, with each other. Then hence the EMC that is used to protect the device from any electromagnetic interference. All right. And does anyone have any other question? If not, I can proceed with the lecture. So what is electromagnetic compatibility? The electromagnetic compatibility is the ability of electrical systems and devices to function adequately in their electromagnetic environment, environment, by which we mean limiting the unintentional generation and propagation and reception of electromagnetic energy. Because once there is an electromagnetic interference with the device, and if your device is not protected against this electromagnetic interference, it could damage your device or it could affect its function in a physical or internal way. So there are three main issues and that pursues the EMC. The first one is the emission, which, generate, which is the generation of electromagnetic energy, whether it's accidental or deliberate, by some source and it's released into the environment. The second class is uh, susceptibility, which is the tendency of electrical devices to malfunction or breakdown and the presence of unwanted emission, which are known as radio frequency interference. And the third class is coupling, which is the mechanism by which emitted interference reaches the victim. And by the victim, we mean the devices. And elements of uh, EMC problem, there are three essential elements uh, for an EMC, which is the source, a coupling path, and the victim. The source of uh, the EMC problem is a lot, but some of the most important ones are the lighting, lightning, uh, RF transmitter, high-speed data trace, etc. And it goes through a path, whether it's cable, antennas, uh, power lines, and it reaches the victim, which is your device, which could be an integrated circuit, a cell phone, a video display. Like for example, uh, they usually say when there is a rain, you have to turn off your devices because if a lightning hits your power line, then it could uh, reduce an electromagnetic interference that will destroy or um, do a serious harm to your device. Then uh, EMI coupling, which is the uh, electromagnetic interference, is divided into five types. Conductive coupling, which occurs when the coupling path between the PC, uh, the source, and the receptor is formed directly from an electrical contact. Then we have the capacitive coupling, which occurs when varying electrical field exists between two adjacent conductors. The third is the inductive coupling, which occurs where the source and the receiver are separated by a short distance. And radiative coupling uh, occurs when a victim are separated by a large distance. And lastly is the magnetic coupling, which occurs when varying magnetic fields exist between two parallel conductors. And it's typically uh, less than the wavelength about. So, uh, uh, 
I guess that's all for our lecture today. We still have an hour left. So how about you guys do some presentation regarding this topic and I will provide the topic to the presenter. You know, the... Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll give you five minutes to prepare your slides, then you'll be able to present it. A few moments later. First presenter, Imran, uh, present your findings. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello. The device that I choose to present uh, in this topic of EMC is the router. Uh, so, what is a router? A router is a device that allows communication between the internet and the devices. Uh, the devices that connect to it is the can form a network that can interact with, with each other. So, the router receive and receive the data from the internet service provider and then transmit the data to the device device connected to it so oh, before that uh, router have a uh, two dual band uh, frequency that is uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz the the 2.4 gigahertz has a long range but slower connection and the 5 gigahertz has a uh, short range but uh, faster connection so if there is a electromagnetic interference emi how does the router deal with it for example like a bluetooth signal and that use the same frequency as the wi-fi signal uh, so when there is a interference, the router can do a digital mo mod modulation to transmit the uh, to transmit the data. What it is mean by di digital modulation it is uh, using a, a quite different frequency for the for the to transmit the data like the diagram in the upper part we can see that it has a 14 channel for 2.4 gigahertz and the router may use the 1 or 6 or 11 or 14 but some of these channels are forbidden in some countries because they are used for tv signal so that's all from my for my finding in the EMC. Thank you. Oh. All right. Thank you, Emra. Uh, does anyone have a question regarding the router? Uh, I would like to ask a question, Doctor. Yes. Uh, Imran, how does router identify different device? So router identify different device by the physical address or also known as the MAC address. MAC address is the med media access control address which is unique for each device. Based on the MAC address then the router can uh, set the DHCP dynamic host configuration configuration protocol service assigned to each to an IP address. Uh, so it uses the MAC address to differentiate uh, each device. Okay, thank you, Mayan. Welcome. Okay. If anyone right now have no other questions, we will proceed to the next presenter. Aina, are you ready? Yes. Okay, please present. Thank you, Doctor. For my device is about a printer. A printer, as we all know, is an output device that produces text and graphics on a physical medium such as paper. Uh, there are two types. Generally, it is an impact printer and non-impact printer. 
Impact printer, it forms a characters and graphics on a piece of paper by striking a me mechanism against an ink ribbon that physically contacts to the paper. Uh, for the non-impact printer, it is a type of printer that does not operate by striking a head against a ribbon. For next, uh, we can see uh, some of the examples of the impact printer and the non-impact printer. For dot matrix printer, it uses print head that contain 9 to 24 point dots that is produce a pattern of the uh, dot uh, on the paper. So, the impact printer is used a mechanism to print out on the paper or any other medium. For non-impact printer, it doesn't use any mechanism, it's directly such as uh, we can see on the laser printer, laser printer use a light beam uh, and it print out to the paper and the thermal use the heat. All right. Another type that is a special type is MPF or we all know as multi-function peripheral device. It is a multi because it is a single device but it is look a copy machine that provides the functionality of printer scanner, copy machine, and perhaps a fat machine. So it can do all the jobs in one device. So for example, there are many, so much printer, but I want to explain uh, one printer that is a laser printer. How the laser printer work? The laser printer, the printers beam your print onto a metal cylinder called a drum. As we can see, there's a drum. Uh, so a laser, the printer beam your print into a metal cylinder called a drum. Using the static electricity, the drum attracts the powdered toner from its cartridge to the drum. Okay, then the drum rolls the toner onto the paper and in the form of your print and the toner is uh, melted into the paper by the heat from the fuser as it passes underneath. So then it will print out the the um, paper uh, okay uh, for the emc we all know that uh, the laser use a light beam so light beam has certain frequency so the frequency uh, just a certain weight uh, we uh, there's a lot there can be uh, some problem i mean some interference uh, to the other devices so to make it, to reduce it, the EMC, the EMI, we use, we apply the EMC by uh, applying the directly Wi-Fi or Bluetooth transmitter to protect the, uh, the both, the, the electromagnetic, um, electromagnetic leakage uh, to the other devices that will instruct with other devices and as well as the printer device. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, anyone have any answer? Uh, any question? Okay, so uh, I have a question. What are some of the printer problem, and how does this printer overcome the problem? All right. Uh, thank you, Faiz. So some of the problem is the printing as uh, we experience. Some of us experience, and uh, the printing is too slow. The connectivity is. Uh, uh, so not um, satisfied uh, the problem pages are sticked, uh, blotchy and faded. So uh, as a user, as a consumer, uh, customer, we need to choose uh, a really good product that undergoes EMC uh, test and MMI test because such as uh, we have uh, some um some some brand that is hp um and etc and as you all know there are serum uh, that can make uh the product the printer is more reliable and trusted all right uh thank you aina and now lokman would you like to start presenting hello everyone Okay, today I will present EMC on speaker. Okay, as we all know, a speaker is a little, a little acoustic conducer. 
uh, transducer device is which convert an electrical audio signal into a corresponding sound. Okay. Uh, the speaker receives audio input from a device such as computer or audio receiver. This input may be either in analog or digital form. Okay, analog speakers simplify amplify the analog electromagnetic wave into sound wave. Since sound wave are produced in analog form, digital speaker must first conduct the digital input to the analog signal, then generate the sound wave. Okay, next is the component of the speaker. As we can see here, okay, the cone and the dust cap, the part that move the air and produce sound, the spider and the surround. For the suspension, these are the part that can hold cone in place while still allowing them to move. The magnet and the voice call, the part of in interact to convert electric energy into motion. The basket, the pole on the top plate, and finally the frame that mount everything together. Next. Okay, now, uh, how speaker work with electromagnetic principle? As we can see in the animation below there, we can see uh, uh, in the plant strengthening electric current flow through the coil, the orange orange with the arrow uh, down there is the coil, which is uh, the electric uh, the electric move, okay, towards the uh, and become a temporary electromagnet, okay. Uh, when uh, the metal which uh, coiling with the the wire which is uh, that bring the electric to the metal it become a temporary electromagnet which can be attracted and repelled by the magnetic um, uh, permanent magnet which is we can see the uh, blue and red right there down there there's a permanent magnet Okay, as the coin moves, it moves the coin grey, the coin back and forth, pumping the sound wave into the air. Into the air. Okay, and then I can sim uh, I can simplify the the working of the speaker actually. Uh, electric current is sent to the coil of wire that can induce the magnetic field. In speaker, a current is sent to the voice call which produces an electric field that interact, interact with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet attached to the speaker. Like charge, repel each other in different charge attract as the audio signal is sent to the voice call and the musical waveform moves up and down, the voice call is attracted and repelled by the permanent magnet. This makes the cone that the voice call is attached to the move and back and forth. The back and forth motion create the pressure wave in the air that will receive as a sound. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I can see that Aina is eager to ask a question to Rukman. What is your question, Aina? All right, thank you, Doctor. Um, Rukman, what is the common problems of the speaker and how to fix it? Okay, the common problem is overpowering high frequency speaker. Usually undergo electrical failure that is caused by the applying too much power to the speaker voice call. Constant overpowering result in burn voice call. The only way to fix this is to reduce the amplifier gain control and treble bass boost control or not to, uh, to drive your audio system so high. Alright, thank you. Welcome. Alright, thank you Lokma. Now I'll ask Pais to present about his topic. Hello everyone, so today I will present about projector. So what's a projector? A projector is an optical device that project image onto a space with through small transparent lens or directly by using laser. There are two types of projector which is the LCD and the LP. The LCD project work by using polarized mirror that pass and reflect certain color of light which is the RGB, red, green and blue. However, for the AIP, it will project work using chip which contain millions of areas that reflect light, which can produce more natural image compared to the LCD. Okay, so we have learned what is the electrical magnetic interference. Uh, as uh, the uh, projector, we have known that it can produce noise and sound which produce for a long time. So, it made by using this, the upper case is electrically grounded and connected to the lower case. Optical engine is disposed in lower case and a flexible sheet is fixed on top of the optical engine and make contact with the upper case which has been the LCD grounded with, uh, to disperse noise to ground. Before we end the class, does anyone have a question for Pais? Yes, Dr. Okay. May, may I ask? Um, how does the types of projector 
affect the uh, quality of the image. LP for LCD, we have using the RGB while the LP is using a uh, mirror that reflect the image. As the LCD has richer color dynamic, which is the RGB, red, green, and blue, uh, it will produce a sharper image compared to the DLP. However, uh, the DLP uh, can have rainbow effect during projection while LCD won. This, that is why uh, the LCD is better to be used in new uh, in classes or university, but if you are using it at the outer for outing, uh, you can use the DLP as it will need a, uh, a projector slide to present it. I hope that answer your question. Uh, yes, thank you, Faiz. Okay, thank you everyone for attending today's class and presenting a simple but very informative presentation. See you all next class. Thank you.